Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is a profile on Howard Gentry Jr., who is the uh, vice mayor for the uh, city of Nashville, Tennessee. And of course, uh, Howard Gentry Jr., let me welcome you, uh, Mr. Gentry, to uh, this uh, show this morning and to uh, say that we're delighted to have you, but uh, you've been with us so many, many more other times. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you were with us long before you became involved in uh, politics. Right. Uh, you, when you were uh, doing small things in a real sense at Tennessee State University, right. and then you went and became involved in the athletic program and owner. So let's uh, start talking about uh, some of the things that you've been involved in and some of the things that not only are you involved in in terms of politics, but some of the other social uh, things that you wish to see happen and some of the other things that you're doing. In order to do that, let's have you to give our audience sort of a, 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 an overview of uh, your background and some of the things that you've been involved in that eventually led you to the uh, my, uh, vice mayor position in Nashville, and then we'll talk about other things, including uh, your candidacy for the uh, mayor of uh, the city of Nashville. Well, uh, thank you, and again, I'm, I'm happy to be on your show, and I have been here numerous times, and it's always a joy. Uh, it's just an honor that you'd ask me. Uh, I was born in Nashville, Tennessee, and, and uh, very fortunate to be able to grow up on the campus of Tennessee State University. My parents were both employed there. My mother was an instructor and my father uh, was an instructor, head coach, then athletics director. And so my life uh, as a young kid all the way up through my adult years has been associated with Tennessee State University. But it's also been a life that has been um, associated with Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have grown up with Nashville mm -hmm. and we've come a long way. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. There was a time in Nashville that that it was a little tough for mm -hmm. a guy that looked like me, mm -hmm. but um, uh, Nashville has changed, Good. times mm -hmm. have changed, and I've, I've been blessed and, and fortunate to uh, be able to rise to the level mm -hmm. of vice mayor. I was educated in Nashville. Mm -hmm. I went through the public school systems. Mm -hmm. uh, went to Pearl High School, very proud of Mm -hmm. of uh, attending Pearl High School, Washington Junior High. Mm -hmm. And um, I was able during those years to really get a quality mm -hmm. education totally, mm -hmm. not just math, science, English, mm -hmm. and history, but uh, also get a, an opportunity to be mentored mm -hmm. by uh, great leaders, great teachers uh, within this community. So. Uh, I've, I've been blessed uh, over my 54 years here in Nashville, and I'm still being blessed. Mm -hmm. Very good. And of course, uh, you know, uh, I understand that uh, you have uh, some ambitions uh, toward being the mayor of the uh, city of Nashville. And uh, your candidacy, I also understand, was announced uh, a couple of months ago. Why don't you say something about uh, coming to a decision in reference to uh, how, why you would want to be the uh, mayor of the city of Nashville? Well, you know, you never know what life uh, is going to uh, have in store for you. Mm -hmm. And that is why I guess my dad and my mother always told me to be, be prepared mm -hmm. for whatever uh, comes your way. And that's why education was so important in my home mm -hmm. and, and why experiences uh, were very important. I was always uh, politically involved and politically aware because my mother was involved and friends around us and we worked in campaigns over my entire mm -hmm. lifetime uh, really not knowing that I was going to get involved personally mm -hmm. in uh, the political side as a politician mm -hmm. as an elected official mm -hmm. but then again I have been in jobs my entire life mm -hmm. where where leadership was necessary, uh, jobs that uh, dealt with the community, from my banking years uh, to uh, being an insurance agency agent, even and and uh, running an insurance agency, and also being a car salesman. I tell people all the time that those three years as a car salesman taught me more than you can ever imagine. You talk about that all the time. Yeah, that was the first mm -hmm. day. And you know, some people politically say, <laughs> maybe you need to keep car salesmen off your resume. Mm -hmm. No, they don't understand mm -hmm. that that was a crossroad in my life. Mm -hmm. And I took on a job after being president of an insurance agency mm -hmm. as a car salesman. And that's the first time in my life that I was really dependent upon my uh, uh, 
my own abilities. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you didn't sell cars, you didn't get paid. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Being the president of an insurance agency, <laughs> you always had that salary. Mm -hmm. But in the car business, I didn't. Mm -hmm. And so I had to develop a skill to mm -hmm. be able to convince somebody to buy mm -hmm. my product because everybody else was selling too. Mm -hmm. And also I had to understand uh, the whole process. Mm -hmm. And that was a time in my life where, where really uh, I stood on my own two feet, mm -hmm. and and uh, my production was uh, the sole source of, of me eating and my family eating, mm -hmm. and it was a great experience. Okay, Mayor, let's let's take this uh, first commercial break. After which we come time, we'll come back and we'll give you an opportunity to continue this conversation, and we'll be back with our audience following this very very short commercial break. Hey, we're talking to Vice Mayor uh, Howard Gentry Jr. And of course, uh, uh, Mayor, uh, before we had our first commercial break, you were talking about uh, some of your experiences, and I think uh, we sort of got tied around uh, you selling cars. But, I, but again, let's pick up at that point and, and to, to explain to us some of the things that you've been involved with. Well, of course, and, and we did in the last segment. And that was just a time in my life where I, I, I became aware that um, uh, I could uh, sell. Mm -hmm. I could actually sell, but I also... Uh, experienced people trusting me and believing me because I tried to tell the truth. I tried to uh, do it the right way and people believed me and, and in, in turn uh, bought my product. Well, uh, my life uh, moved on. I went to law school at the National School of Law and while I was in law school, TSU called mm -hmm. and uh, offered me an opportunity to come to work there mm -hmm. uh, as Director of Development. And so um, I had been working in the courts for Judge Schreiber as a law clerk and a court officer, and he told me I should go. Mm -hmm. And so I went and uh, spent 15 wonderful years mm -hmm. there as an employee and had the opportunity to serve in many positions, mm -hmm. uh, executive director of the TSU Foundation, mm -hmm. athletics director, mm -hmm. uh, assistant vice president for development, uh, associate vice president for technology. Mm -hmm. And administrative services and it was just a, a, a very awesome time there mm -hmm. and um, that's over the period of years I developed mm -hmm. and um, then all of a sudden I had this desire to do more mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to serve the public in a way uh, to the maximum of my ability mm -hmm. and I actually truly felt that politics locally mm -hmm. was a way to do it and mm -hmm. so I ran for councilman at large mm -hmm. and uh, I won uh, historic race. Carolyn mm -hmm. Tucker and I were the first African Americans mm -hmm. uh, to win. And then uh, I, I um, was the um, uh, chair of the uh, Budget and Finance Committee mm -hmm. uh, my second year. And uh, then I ran for President Pro Tem in my third year mm -hmm. and I was successful. And then all of a sudden uh, circumstances mm -hmm. uh, occurred where I became vice mayor pro tem mm -hmm. and I served that for a year then I had to run for the office mm -hmm. had a very tough race against two of my colleagues mm -hmm. I was able to win uh, the vice mayor's race in the next term that I ran I had no opposition mm -hmm. and so I'm in my last term now mm -hmm. and as circumstances have it Mayor Purcell has announced that he is not mm -hmm. going to run a third term and so uh, I was looking at it very seriously, mm -hmm. and uh, he came to me and told me that he was not going to run a third term, mm -hmm. and then I determined that it was time for me mm -hmm. to take that next step, mm -hmm. and that's where I am. And that is truly a historic step in, uh, in the city of Nashville, too. And I, I think you've al already mentioned how Nashville has changed. Uh, yes. Over your long yes. Life. Speak to that. Uh, some well, things, you know, because the very, very fact that you were, uh, you and uh, Miss Tucker were mm -hmm. uh, successful in in that in those positions, it, it indicated something then at that time about mm -hmm. Nashville. Period. You know, I don't dwell on it, but it's just a fact, and especially during uh, this period uh, of the year, uh, you know, uh, life for a guy that uh, looked like me, mm -hmm. as I stated earlier wasn't always the greatest. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a town, a city that was segregated. We had a, a city that uh, maybe not as bad as others, but still mm -hmm. discriminated against mm -hmm. uh, uh, people of, of, of the African-American uh, descent. Mm -hmm. And 
it was it was not fun. It was not fun during those periods. But you know, I told you that it was a blessing that I grew up on TSU's mm -hmm. campus mm -hmm. because I had my own little city mm -hmm. to grow up on. But the reality is that that um, there were times that I went to the courthouse. I never forget going to the Capitol and seeing colored mm -hmm. and white bathrooms and mm -hmm. saying, my goodness, I can't even go to the bathroom that the governor mm -hmm. uses and mm -hmm. to go to the War Memorial Building and have to sit upstairs and, and to go to Centennial Park and not be able to go on the side where the lake was and mm -hmm. fish in the pond. And, and uh, you know, when I think about those things, uh, that was pretty bad. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that even though those things were occurring, mm. in my house, my parents were telling me, uh, times are going to change. Mm -hmm. At church, my preacher, Kelly Miller Smith, was saying, times mm -hmm. are going to change. Mm -hmm. Our teachers were telling us, you need to read these books, though they're second, third handed, mm -hmm. because the words in these books, though the books are dirty and tattered, mm -hmm. these words are golden. Mm -hmm. And they're the same words that the other kids are reading mm -hmm. in the new books. And you need to be prepared to take your rightful place in society mm -hmm when the time comes that society will accept mm -hmm. you. Well, of course you don't believe it back mm -hmm. in those days, but the fact is that the time did come, mm -hmm. and the time has come, mm -hmm. and I have been prepared, not just by Tennessee State University, mm -hmm. but by this entire city. I have been prepared to take my rightful place, and mm -hmm. it's because as I have prepared, mm -hmm. Nashville has changed, mm -hmm. and Nashville has become now one of the premier cities mm -hmm. as it relates to uh, diversity mm -hmm. and and opening its arms up not just for African American mm -hmm. but Americans but uh, people from all nationalities. Mm -hmm. We have a melting pot here in this mm -hmm. city, and though we have a long way to go, mm -hmm. we have come a long mm -hmm. way, and so it just makes me feel good. It it almost makes my parents and my preachers and teachers prophets mm -hmm. because they prophesized this mm -hmm. and they made us uh, wear blinders. Mm -hmm. They made us uh, forgive. They mm -hmm. made us not forget, mm -hmm. but forgive mm -hmm. and to not get caught up uh, with that uh, anchor mm -hmm. to drag us backwards, mm -hmm. but to continue to move forward mm -hmm. with uh, with hope. And and now here we are, mm -hmm. and here I am uh, running for mayor and feel very confident mm -hmm. that I have a very legitimate chance of winning this race because I believe that Nashville uh, has accepted me, Nashville believes in me, and also Nashville is ready. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I'm reminded uh, as we make preparations for this second commercial break that uh, I had your father on this uh, show many, many years ago, and one of the things that he talked about was his involvement in transforming uh, Tennessee State University athletics uh, by entering the OVC and how yes. important that was yes. and et cetera. And so I, I, I indeed understand exactly how, how you feel and where you're coming from in reference to that. And well, so I'm blessed to be able to have had a father like my dad who was a visionary. I'm blessed to still have my mother mm -hmm. who uh, also is a visionary mm -hmm. and, and to have really experienced these things that I'm experiencing mm -hmm. way before. I've had this opportunity, so I have grown up with the belief mm -hmm. that uh, all of this could occur because I've seen it happen, mm -hmm. and uh, I truly believe it. Okay, let us take this uh, second commercial break, uh, Mayor, and then we'll come back and uh, have this final segment and give you an opportunity to talk about that and other things. Okay. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break. This is a profile on Howard Gentry, Jr., the vice mayor for the uh, city of Nashville, Tennessee. And of course, Mayor, before we had our, fi our final commercial break in a real sense, uh, we promised that we'd give you an opportunity to uh, talk about some of the issues that you see to be very, very important in uh, your upcoming effort to uh, be mayor of the uh, city of Nashville. Well, you know, Nashville has um issues that are important to it because when you have a metropolitan city, mm -hmm. a city that is on the move, uh, there are a lot of issues mm -hmm. that are, are germane to uh, a city like Nashville. Mm -hmm. And of course, number one and always number one in my mind uh, will be a public education. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, a lot of people say, well, y'all always say public education. Mm -hmm. Well, public education, the system of public education mm -hmm. educates over 70,000 youth a year. 
That is our future population. Those are the future workers and leaders of this city. Uh, there are other institutions, private and otherwise, that are around the city who also do a great job of educating, but the masses are educated through our public education mm -hmm. system. So if we want to have a progressive city, if we want to have a healthy city, if we want to have a city that is, is going to continue to be on the move, mm -hmm. then we got to make sure that those people who are educated in our public school system mm -hmm. are getting the best education mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. So it's got to stay number one, you know, but as you have a growing city, you have growing pains. Mm -hmm. And of course, traffic is a big issue mm -hmm. and it's becoming more and more of an issue uh, in our city of Nashville. And though people are talking about light rail and alternative sources of transportation, our MTA bus lines are starting to improve. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do is we've got to use it to its maximum. Mm -hmm. We've got to make sure that the bus routes uh, start um, moving a little quicker rather than a 45 minute wait, mm -hmm. maybe uh, uh, get it to a 20 minute rate wait. Mm -hmm. so the only way you can do that is provide more buses and, mm -hmm. and more resources. Uh, and there are other alternatives where you can keep the buses running mm -hmm. at stoplights and what have you mm -hmm. uh, and, and to keep it flowing. You have to educate your community mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. used to driving everywhere it goes that uh, the alternative uh, mode of transportation mm -hmm. is best. So that is going to be very important. Mm -hmm. Nashville is is right now growing. Mm -hmm. There's a boom going on and it's very important that we continue to grow. We need to continue to prosper. Downtown is starting to grow. People are starting to move mm -hmm. back to the inner core of the city and that's very important because the inner core is the heart of the city and so if it's vibrant the city becomes vibrant. But as we move in these directions, mm -hmm. we cannot forget that our communities are important. Mm -hmm. And right now we have some communities that are hurting. Mm -hmm. We have some uh, communities that are struggling with their family structure. Mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, kids that are not um, uh, getting the type of attention that they need. And it's mm -hmm. not always a negative uh, mark against the parents. Mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of these homes, the parents are doing all they can. Mm -hmm. The mama might have two or three children and she's got to work. Mm -hmm. And she might have to get the bus and have three stops before she gets mm -hmm. uh, back home. So the child comes home to an empty house, to an mm -hmm. empty nest. Mm -hmm. It would be nice if we could utilize our social services mm -hmm. and other mm -hmm. services within the communities to provide opportunities, mm -hmm. not giveaways, not subsidies, mm -hmm. but opportunities mm -hmm. where these parents can work closer to home, mm -hmm. where they can be home and have a home structure uh, uh, a little better than it is becoming. Mm -hmm. Because see, we can pour all the money we want to pour mm -hmm. into public education, mm -hmm. but if the child is not ready to learn, mm -hmm. if the child goes to school every day hungry, if a child goes to school every day hopeless, mm -hmm. I don't care if you put a billion dollars yeah. into public education, that child is not going to be ready mm -hmm. to receive the benefits of it. So mm -hmm. we're going to have to uplift and strengthen mm -hmm. the family base, yes. the family structure in our communities so communities can be safe and mm -hmm. so communities can be uh, prepared mm -hmm. uh, to raise the children in the way they need to be. Mm -hmm. We need to continue to work on crime mm -hmm. and Nashville really uh, over the last couple of years is reducing mm -hmm. um, um, the percentage of crimes. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, the murder rate is still continuing to climb. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, the uh, drugs are still uh, making, uh, um, um, are still increasing mm -hmm. in the drug usage. Gang members are starting to mm -hmm. become more prevalent and I still think it's because that family structure is not mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. The gang is the alternative. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to get continue mm -hmm. to work not just the police department. You know, mm -hmm. we always want to put it on the police department. Mm -hmm. We need to work as a community mm -hmm. to, uh, to help to deter Mm -hmm. uh, criminal actions and mm -hmm. I am very blessed to be the CEO of Backfield in Motion mm -hmm. and it's a program mm -hmm. that combines athletics and ac academics to inspire inner city boys to reach their maximum potential and we use sports as a hook mm -hmm. we really mm -hmm. do because even though we provide football basketball and baseball what we really do is get these boys into the program mm -hmm. and mentor them we educate them. We have tutors from metro school systems that work with them on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. uh, we have leadership programs. We have uh, 
yes, we have sports programs, but those programs are only fifth and sixth grade, mm -hmm. but we keep the young man uh, after that, mm -hmm. and we provide all types of enrichment mm -hmm. and uh, mentorships for them, and then what we do is we turn them into leaders, mm -hmm. and uh, these programs, Backfield in Motion is a very special program, mm -hmm. but we have programs like this all over the city, mm -hmm. and if we can have a concerted effort to have the backfield in motions mm -hmm. add that little piece that's missing, mm -hmm. it would be such a great thing. And, and a backfield is on Woodland Street, right in East Nashville. Mm -hmm. We work out of six community centers. Our coaches and our staff have permission from the parents to go into the schools. Mm -hmm. We go into the schools every day. We track these young men. We follow their grades. Mm -hmm. We uh, also um, have them to turn their report cards into mm -hmm. us. And so not only do they win on the field, mm -hmm. but we have opportunities for them to also compete in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And uh, every card marking, uh, the group that has the highest mm -hmm. average uh, gets rewarded for mm -hmm. that. And then the group that has lower averages mm -hmm. get, gets more work. Mm -hmm. And those are the, the, the kids and that, that we work hardest with. And so the fact is that that backfield in motion is a lifesaver. Mm. A backfield in motion can change the lives not only of these young men, mm -hmm. but their whole families because we get the families involved. Mm -hmm. And there is hope for these young people. There is mm -hmm. hope for the entire communities that are suffering, but we just have to get involved in it mm -hmm. and, and be a part of it. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really a blessing to be at this organization, mm -hmm. to be involved hands-on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll probably say, if I ever leave it, uh, that it probably will end up being the highlight mm -hmm. of my uh, professional life. Mm -hmm. Because I know that every day I go to work at Backfield mm -hmm. Emotion that I'm making a difference in a child's life. You know, Mayor, over the last two minutes that we have here, uh, I had an opportunity on this uh, program to uh, talk to uh, individuals involved with uh, uh, Partners for Survival and uh, Mr. Jordan and others. And it seems to be that one, one of the uh, chief things that they always